Uh, so this is lecture 37 in our course entitled Curve Sketching 2. Uh, this lecture is intended to be a continuation of what we talked about last time in uh, lecture part 36 uh, about curve sketching. Uh, the examples for this lecture will be taken from James Stewart's calculus textbook, particularly section 4.5 entitled Summary of Curve Sketching. And so in the last lecture, we talked about the basics of curve sketching and we worked through three examples and that took a good honking 50 minutes to get through them all. One curve sketching example can take a lot of time. So I want to do some more examples, three more this time. Um, it shouldn't take as long because we're not learning the basics of it this time, but I want to do some more examples. Uh, last time we had focused entirely on functions that were polynomials or rational functions, that is quotients of polynomials. I wanted to look at some which were a little bit more exotic today. Uh, so for example, let's take this function f of x equals x squared over the square root of x plus one. That is, there's a square root involved in the calculation this time. How does that affect things? Well, if we start off looking at the domain of this thing, the issues with the domain are gonna come from the denominator because we don't wanna divide by zero and we also don't wanna take the square root of negative. So if we think about the square root issue first, we need that x plus one is greater than or equal to zero, uh, which would suggest that x needs to be greater than or equal to negative one. But likewise, we also don't want to divide by zero, in which case the square root of x plus one, we have to figure out what makes that equal to zero. Well, squaring both sides, that implies that x plus one equals zero, or other words, x would equal negative one there. So earlier we had mentioned that x should be greater than or equal to negative one, but here, uh, because of division by zero, we actually don't want it to equal negative one. So the domain of this function is going to equal negative one to infinity, where negative one's not included in that. I also want to mention that right off the bat, that if its domain is negative in one to infinity, we can already say that in terms of symmetry, nah, -uh, there's not going to be any symmetry here. You can't be even or odd if your domain isn't symmetric. Uh, therefore, I'm not even going to bother calculating it because I know it's not going to work. Um, in terms of intercepts, right, uh, if we were to look at f of 0, uh, we would get 0 squared over the square root of 0 plus 1. That gives us 0 over 1, which is 0. Uh, it's our y-intercept. And then if we were to try the x-intercepts, we have to look at x squared over the square root of x plus 1 equals 0. Whenever a fraction equals zero, you can really just multiply both sides by that denominator, cancels out. It's only the numerator that matters in this situation, x squared equals zero, and then we get that x equals zero. So what we've discovered here is that our x-intercept is also our y-intercept. It's gonna be zero, zero, and the domain is gonna be negative one to infinity. So let me highlight sort of the important things we found here. Uh, so we have an x-intercept and a y-intercept, and our domain was given. Great. Uh, let's consider the in behavior of the function. So if we take the limit as x approaches infinity here of our function x squared over the square root of x plus 1. Uh, as x goes to infinity, let's again pay attention to the dominant terms going on right here. In the denominator, the dominant term is going to be the square root of x. In the numerator, it's going to be an x squared. And so this thing is going to look essentially just like x squared over x to the one-half power as x goes to infinity. And so this would simplify as a fraction just to be x to the three-halves as x goes to infinity. And so as a power function, as x goes to infinity, some positive power of x will also go to infinity. So this thing points up on the right-hand side. But on the left side, things are a little bit different. We can't ask the question what happens as x goes to negative infinity because this graph terminates at negative one. So we can actually ask what happens as you approach negative one from the right as we get x squared over the square root of x plus one. And so what happens as x approaches negative one right here? Well, on the top, you're gonna get negative one plus squared over the square root of negative one plus plus one. And so when you square something, uh, it's always gonna be positive. And so the negative one is just gonna look like a one on top. 
Now we have to be careful on the bottom because if you're approaching negative one from the right and you add one to it, is that gonna be a positive number or a negative number? And it's gonna be positive because uh, because we're, we're a little bit, we're a little bit shy of negative one from the right. When you add one to that, that'll give you zero plus on the right hand side. We take the square root of that. Well, that'll simplify to be one over zero plus, which looks like plus infinity. So it turns out that this is going to give us a vertical asymptote on the graph. And we're going to point up on the right hand side as well. So let's record what we have so far on the graph. So we know that this function will go through the origin. It's its x and y intercept. We know that on the right hand side, it wants to point up. Maybe I do a different color for that because we'll have to come back to this in a little bit. We know it points up on the right-hand side. We also know how to vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. So let's draw that. And so we also can see that this thing is gonna be pointing up on the right-hand side. We'll come back to those a little bit later. Let me erase them for now. All right, so let's, let's think about the derivative for a little bit. How, how is the derivative gonna affect things? Well, the original function, let me write it back on the screen so we can see it here. The original function y equals x squared over the square root of x plus one. Let's see, x plus one. And so as we look at the first derivative, Uh, we're going to have to apply the quotient rule again. And I'm not going to go through all the details of calculating the derivative this time, just so you're aware. Uh, but if we, if we take the derivative, we're going to end up with 3x squared plus 4x over 2 times x plus 1 to the 3 halves like so, all right? And so there, 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 there's some details to be there and I apologize for not doing all the details there, but that's gonna be the usual quotient rule type of thing. And so what we wanna be looking for is when does this thing go to zero? Uh, that'll happen when the numerator goes to zero. So we're interested in three X squared plus four equals zero. If you factor that thing, you can take out a factor of X. So you get three X plus four, when does that equal zero? And we can see that this will happen when x equals zero and negative four thirds. Uh, we also have to worry about when the denominator goes to zero. And the denominator is gonna to go to zero, the two doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, the denominator will go to zero when x plus one equals zero which happens here at negative one. Now, negative one's outside the domain of this thing, so nothing's really too worried about right there. Uh, we need the second derivative, which again, you're gonna excuse me, I'm just gonna jump immediately to the derivative. Uh, use the quotient rule again on this thing above. And when you take the second derivative, you'll end up with a three x squared. Right, three x squared plus 8x plus 8. And this sits above 4 times x plus 1 raised to the 5 halves power. And so again, there's issue. The denominator will go to 0 when x equals negative 1. That's the boundary of the domain. When does the numerator go to 0? Well, the, new, the denominator won't make much of a difference there. We have to look at uh, look at the denominator there, the numerator there, excuse me. So we have 3x squared plus 8x plus 8. When does that equal 0? And when you try to solve this uh, quadratic polynomial, you could try to factor. It doesn't really work. You could use the quadratic formula, but it turns out that when this when you try to solve for this, Turns out it never actually equals zero. This thing is strictly positive. 
And so this tells us that the graph has no PPIs. It'll be either always concave up or always concave down. Let's come back up here. And so if we build our sign chart, uh, the numbers that we should be interested in on from what we looked at before, the second derivative never equal to zero. We had a single critical number at zero. And actually, I forgot to mention this earlier, because didn't we have two critical numbers, right? We had zero and negative four thirds. But remember the domain, right? The domain was negative one to infinity, negative four thirds is outside of that domain. So we only have the one critical number at zero. So that's all we have to contend with when we look at the second derivative here. Now the second derivative, remember what it was, is the three X squared plus eight X plus eight was always positive. The four is always positive. An X plus one will be positive when you're greater than negative one and it'll be zero when you're less than negative one. And so what we see is that the second derivative is always positive right here. And so this graph is gonna always be concave up, concave up, concave up. And so we actually get a local minimum right here on the graph. So X equals zero represents this minimum value. If we approach our asymptote, we're gonna go up towards infinity. And then we're also going to approach infinity on the right-hand side as well. And so the graph's going to look something like this. Um, let's take a look at a computer-generated image, and we see, voila, we had a pretty good picture there.